Hi, my name's Rich Harrington. And I'm Robbie Carmen. And welcome to the Creative Cow DSLR podcast. Now today, we're tackling one of those questions that comes up time and time again in the forum. Should I go with a cropped sensor or a non-cropped sensor? Well, it's a choice that a lot of people have to make, but the first thing before you make the choice, it's good to know what's out there. And sensors really come down to a few different categories. You have full frame sensors, um, like the Canon 5D Mark II. Or the D3S on Nikon side. Absolutely. Um, then you have cropped image sensors, right? So the actual sensor size for these crop cameras is a little bit smaller than, say, a full frame camera. And that really makes a difference in shooting stills, uh, but it ha does have some impact in the world of video shooting as well. Yeah, the biggest difference uh, that you're gonna find when you attach a lens to the camera is that your lens is not gonna work as advertised. Um, for example, with Canon cameras, um, their cropped cameras use a crop factor of 1.6. So you put a 50 millimeter lens on it, it's not really 50 millimeters. It's 50 millimeters times 1.6. Exactly. Right. And same thing here, like if I'm using my Nikon D7000, it's a 1.5. Correct. So if I put on a 35 millimeter lens, it's actually behaving more like a 50 millimeter lens. That's absolutely correct. And then there's, you know, to add to the mix a little bit, different camera systems like Panasonic's Micro uh, Four Thirds system, that actually uses a crop factor that's closer to two. Okay, so sort of the bottom line here is that crop factor isn't necessarily a bad thing, but you do need to keep it in mind, especially if you're yeah. trying to match shots. Now, I've noticed on shoots where we have different crop factors on the cameras, which means a different sensor size. Yep. So you might have a 5D shooting and you might be at say F4. Yep. Well, when you go over to a crop sensor, you can't be on the same F-stop if you want to match those exposures. Right, because the other difference besides just the lens reach that you're going to get is that the larger sensors are going to be natively just more sensitive uh, to low light conditions. You're going to be able to um, generally expose the image uh, in a different way on the full frame cameras. So why do we have crop sensors? What's the what's really the driving factor here? Uh, cost, e yeah. exactly. It's a little bit more expensive to manufacture the full frame sensors and that's typically why you find them in the higher end uh, cam uh, cameras. So I see here that you know, you're know you using a, a 7D and it's offering you 1920 by 1080. Yep. You know, but you can also go down to a 720p size. Yeah, typically for video on DSLRs, the actual sensor size is not gonna give you a different choice, if you will, for how you're gonna be recording video in terms of the video frame size. Typically, you're gonna find two or three different options. The first would be 1920 by 1080. Right. Um, the second option would be 1280 by 720. And then depending on the camera, you might get a 640 by 480 choice as well for a standard, def a standard definition frame size. And it really varies by manufacturer. Like the original round of Nikons didn't really offer a 1080 size. The newest ones do, although they have far more 720 choices. You know, I've got multiple frame rate choices for 720, yep. while when shooting on a Canon, my only choice with 720 is actually to do a 60p. Right, and we'll, and we'll talk more about frame rates in a later episode. But you know, the basic choice that you have for, and for most of these cameras is gonna be a 1080 or 720 high depth choice. My personal feeling about it is if you have the 1080 option available to you, shoot at 1080. Sure. Um, it's, you know, it's because it's always easier to downsize things if you need to say a 720 resolution or standard definition uh, size. But um, if you shoot at 720, if you need to go up for broadcast, for example, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Okay, and there is one big thing here, which is when you're shooting with these cameras, there's a difference between when you're shooting stills and when you're shooting video, how much of the sensor you're using. Absolutely, when you're shooting stills, you're using almost the entire sensor. So if you look at a, say, a Canon 5D or some of the Nikon full frame offerings, you're using that big image size. Okay. But when you're shooting video, you're using a very small portion of that, about two megapixels actually in 1080. So flip that over to live view and yeah. let's just point it down at the white on the desk here and we're gonna see a masked area, right? Yeah. So I'm just looking at the desk here, you know, or I can point out, you know, to you or something like that. And what you'll notice here is that we have this little masked edges here. Um, this is due to a couple reasons. First, when you're shooting stills, you're not shooting in a 16 by nine aspect ratio like you are when you're shooting high definition video. And then the other thing is, is that yeah, this is just another visual indicator that you're not using the entire frame, you're just using our entire sensor, you're just using a portion of that sensor to shoot video. One of the things that I recommend is even considering taking some gaffer's tape and mark out the area on your monitor that's actually being used because I've seen people sort of get confused as they're pointing what area they're shooting and you know they're composing their shots and they may be cutting off a little bit of the headroom that they don't want. Absolutely, and that's always a good idea for things like if you have to protect for a four by three safe or you know bug safe or something like that, that's always a good option as well. Great, well, I hope that makes sense. You know, when you're out there choosing an HDSLR camera, there's 
all sorts of different crop factors. Not having a full frame sensor isn't the end of the world. We'll explore some of the other options that come into play in some of the situations where those cameras are useful. But I think you know it's important to realize that having a magnification factor isn't necessarily a bad thing when shooting video. No, because all of these cameras at the end of the day, they're not utilizing that you know that full uh, size of the sensor anyway they're using a much smaller portion you just might gain some benefits in the uh, native uh, sensitivity of the sensor using a bigger sensor well, i hope you enjoyed this episode of the creative cow dslr podcast my name is rich harrington and i'm robbie carmen and be sure to head on over to creativecow.net and check out our forums there where there's lots of great activity and conversation going on about these new cameras